CES 2008 is insanely large. 1.8 million square feet of exhibition space, 2,700 exhibitors, 25,000 international attendees, with over 140,000 people here all together. What we're going to try and do on this trip is take you through the show, do a little bit of an overview, see what's really important to advance media technology, how consumers are going to consume media, what the paradigm for consumption is going to change into. We can get an up-close personal view right here at CES. Wireless HD, memory sticks with capacity you've never seen before, the flattest flat screens, the brightest brights, the darkest darks. We are going to see televisions you've never seen before. CES this year is pointing the way to some very, very serious trends in the business. Let's have a look. I am standing at the Motorola booth where the most interesting thing I've seen at the show so far is the Z10. I brought Paul Alfieri from Motorola to demonstrate it for us, so let's have a look. This is the new Motorola Z10. It's our latest kick slider product. You can see it kicks out on the bottom. Um, what's unique about this product is that it's filmmaking on the fly. Let me show you what you can do with it. So if I come over here, I can actually launch my mobile film studio. So if I select the storyboard, you'll see that it pulls up the media gallery with all the clips that are stored on the phone. So we'll select one, this clip of Vegas, and it immediately adds it to a timeline. If I click in the middle, I can choose a transition between the two. So there's a fade transition. Coolest part of the Z10 by far is its ability to upload instantly to not only your YouTube account, but Flickr or any of the other accounts you might have up to 10 carbon copied accounts upload once and your video within just a few minutes is available worldwide. We've talked about this kind of production tool for years and years and years, but to actually hold one in your hand is something quite special. Thanks so much. Yep. Okay. I really cool. appreciate it. You don't mind, you don't mind if I keep this here? I'm sorry? Here at the show, the big story is wireless HD. Everybody's got them. My favorite example is right here in the LG booth. A big, honking, extraordinary HD monitor right behind me. And what? A stack of boxes. Unremarkable because you're used to seeing a stack of boxes and an HD monitor with no wires. But this one, look ma, really no wires. It may not sound like much and it may be unremarkable when you look at it, but the power of this is unimaginable. People who are technophobic, who need Geek Squad to basically plug in a toaster, now can hook an HD in the wall by simply plugging in a power cable up to 65 feet away, can be all the gear they never have to see. Mom's happy. Dad's happy, consumer electronics sellers are happy, and the television industry changes in a way you never thought possible. Okay, at CES, you gotta see what you gotta see. Panasonic this year is taking the prize. 150-inch plasma display. Why anybody needs a 150-inch TV, or even to make one? Who knows? Nine million pixels, big fun. Pioneer is known for what Pioneer is known for. They're the high-end guys. And you know what? This year, thin is in. Every manufacturer, from LG to the extreme Sony, so, so thin the remote control is thicker, is talking about how thin and beautiful their sets are. This is pretty thin and pretty beautiful. There was a time when people had stereo systems, and then, of course, they started to listen on their computer. But every once in a while, you just need to plug in all your high-end components. As a matter of fact, any high-end component you could ever imagine ever owning should be plugged into what Pioneer calls the very best amplifier on the planet. Just take a look at all the stuff you might stuff into this box. 3840 by 2160, that's four times the pixel resolution of a regular HD television set. How mind-blowing is this from Samsung? It's just never going to come out under any circumstances. There's no camera that can shoot this picture. There's no set that can play it except for this one. But what an extraordinary, extraordinary demonstration of this technology. No, it's not NatPe, it's CES. And actually, NBC has a huge presence here. Why? Because this show is where content, creativity, execution, and technology all come together. And this is a huge sign of the future. Here you have a company that is basically only known as a content company. NBC makes good television, NBC Universal makes good television and good movies. Here, they're gonna make good television and good movies for what? For people who consume media. And where do you consume media? At the Consumer Electronics Show. I'm standing in front of the Blu-ray booth at Panasonic, and as you know, the Blu-ray HD DVD war has been called in favor of Blu-ray. Whether that's actually true or false, no one's really quite sure. But we're at the CES show, where you can see solid-state memory chips from 32 gigabytes all the way up to 892 gigabytes. What does that mean in the real world? It means you can carry solid-state storage that actually obviates the need for optical storage. So what's the true future of HD DVD versus Blu-ray? It may be solid-state memory. Standing in front of the Sony Electronics booth, the most serious electronics company in the universe. But first, some dancing Sony MP3 players. Check 
Shakira, Shakira. Oh, baby, when you talk. Like many of the other manufacturers here at CES, Sony has a wireless HD offering. Sony's, however, has a 200-foot capacity, which means you can have your stack of goo about 200 feet from your monitor on the wall. Again, it may sound unremarkable, but I really think this is a game changer. One of my favorite future thinking technologies at the show is here at the Sony booth. It's called Transfer Jet. What it basically is is an ultra wideband play. It's faster than USB 2.0, it's faster than Firewire, and all you do is you take your device with the embedded chip and you literally just lay it on the table. If the table has a receiver into it and it's within an inch and a half of the device, it's going to start to transfer. It's just extraordinary. Most people are cable phobic. It's just hard to do. Even plugging in your iPod seems to be an inconvenience. That may be a thing of the past. Like I said, it's not Natby, it's CES, but what Sony Pictures and Sony Pictures Television is here, one more absolute affirmation that content and technology need to be in the same place, thought of in the same way. Consumers consume, distributors distribute, and all of it happens on consumer technology. Here at Sony, the thing they're probably most proud of today is OLED, organic LED, the thinnest television sets you will ever see anywhere. An 11-inch model right out of the box is about 2,500 bucks, but that's just today. Soon you'll see them in every size. How much will they cost? What will they look like? We have no idea. The picture is spectacular, and the set is so thin, the remote control is actually thicker. It's not a TV remote, it's an internet TV remote. This is the Bravia internet video link, and guess what? You get to watch television on the internet and internet on television. Over the top is the biggest story at CES 2008. Everybody's ethernet connected. Everyone's talking about how you can watch video you find on the internet in a lean back environment, which is exactly how you, the consumer, want to watch it. It's how I want to watch it. Most importantly, it's how you can watch Media 3.0 on your Bravia right here. I'm at the Sony booth and I'm standing with Steve Jacobs, the one and only my Sony guru, the guy who knows more about Sony than anybody else living on the planet, including Sir Howard Stringer. So Steve, what's going on? Man, you know, how do I answer that? <laughs> You're not supposed to answer. You know, this is a great year for Sony, of course, because we've, uh, we really have gone the extra distance in trying to reach out to consumers this year with our themes of mobility, portability, creativity, and of course, Sony Pictures, which announced that it's going to bring Jeopardy to CES 2009. So we hope that you and, and all of your friends at Media3.0 will be here to witness that epic Celebrity moment. Jeopardy here, CES 2009. Don't miss it. Recognize this? Rabbit ears, circa 1950. But you know what it really is? It's a digital television antenna. And on February 17th, 2009, the FCC is going to make it absolutely mandatory for 15 million households in the United States to get a digital television antenna. You'll need a converter box to make your set work, and you're absolutely going to need a digital antenna to tune in those TV signals. If you are one of the 65 million cable households, you're not going to care. If you're one of the 20 to 25 million satellite households, you're not going to care. But if you're one of the 15 million American households that get their television, their broadcast television, over the air, Green tech may be a very important solution for you. CS 2008 actually is known for its high tech and animatronic women. Wait, they're real. Oh, sorry. The world is getting smaller, the world is getting faster, but the most important thing that's happened at this show is probably the overwhelming amount of data. If you walk down the aisles of CES, it's petabytes and petabytes of pictures and petabytes of data and petabytes of moving pictures and still images. Where will you put it? How will you deal with it? Everybody's talking HD, but consumers have to casually move that stuff around their house. I have a 1.8 gigabyte movie I've got to move. Is that 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? How about 60 seconds? In my hand, I am holding a new IBM technology that will literally allow me to transfer two gigabytes of data in 60 seconds. I walk up to a kiosk in an airport and I say, I want to take Pirates of the Caribbean with me. Not an hour, not 10 minutes, not a DVD, on a jump drive, in my hand, 60 seconds, count them. So you have to reimagine the future the way IBM has reimagined it. When you think about the amount of data you need to carry around with you, it's actually overwhelming. Technologies like this are our first glimpse into how we all may be carrying our movies and our music around with us in the future. What am I holding in my hand? What does it look like? It's a 64 gigabytes SSD, solid state disk. And why do you care? Because this has no moving parts. What does it mean to you? It means your laptop's gonna start the minute you press this, the on button. Why do you care about that? Well, let's see. Battery life can be measured in many more hours than you can now. And if Moore's Law gets thrown out the window like we think it will, you can see this up to 832 gigabytes by the end of next year in products you can own and you can use. 
almost a terabyte around your neck, almost a terabyte in your laptop, longer battery life, and unbelievable storage capacity, SSD. So there you have it, CES 2008 in a nutshell. It's the largest consumer electronics show on the planet, and we only showed you the smallest little bit. Key takeaways, wireless HD sets, because without wires, anyone can use them. Internet connected sets, because with internet connectivity, everyone can see everything. And of course, the overwhelming trend here is making stuff as easy for consumers as possible. Which technologies will live and die? What are the real hot spots? What are the paradigm shifts and what are the parlor tricks? I don't know, we'll come back next year to CES 2009 and see. But until then, for Media Bytes. I'm Shelley Palmer. For news you can use about technology, media, and entertainment, visit Media 3.0 with Shelley Palmer at Media30.com. That's M-E-D-I-A 30.com.